Hey everybody, Mike Day here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a beginner's concrete floor. So this is your basic concrete floor. Um, it's probably like 36 by 28, and this is how this is how most of our concrete floor pours go. We have to we back a truck up to one end. That's our only access, and a lot of times we have to hook on a concrete chute to reach the other end. Hey, if, if you're new to this channel and you like learning about concrete, my channel is all about pouring concrete floors, doing stamp concrete, um, concrete repair, concrete stain, all that kind of stuff. So go ahead down below and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification. I come out with two to three videos a week about this kind of stuff. As you can see, we... We poured usually like a 3,000 or a 3,500 PSI concrete mix and we always use a water reducer in our concrete which means the water reducer is a, is a chemical additive and it lets us pour a little bit looser slump than normal without damaging the concrete. Kind of like a super plasticizer. So there's just three of us, sometimes there's four of us, but so we don't pour the like to pour the concrete too stiff we like about a six inch slump and that just makes it easier to pour all the way around it makes it easier so we use a water reducer whenever we pour concrete just to make the slump a little bit looser than than it needs to be it doesn't affect the drying at all because the, the chemical wears off in about 45 minutes and then the slump goes right back to what it should be so if I tell the driver I want a six inch slump, then without the chemical it would be about a two or a three inch slump. Now as you can see we're just pouring out probably half of this floor before we start doing anything to it. This is, I'm assuming this is two trucks. And if it is, it's around 13 yards, probably 12, 13 yards. We always like to pour out the first truck and just get it poured out, get that truck out of there and then uh, get the second truck backed in. So we'll get this truck dumped right out. We're using what we call come-alongs to pull that concrete around with. I got links for, the, for all these tools down in the description, guys. I think there's even one there for that concrete chute. We have a 16-foot chute. We got a 12-foot chute. We got a 10. We got an 8. So we use all different sizes depending on what we need. You can see those are, those are my two trucks in the background. We have all different size straight edges too. We go from 4 feet to 14 feet in about 2 foot increments on our straight edges. And we're getting down to we're getting down to where the end of this truck is going to be poured just trying to keep that concrete you know as even as possible across there so we don't have a real jagged edge between the two trucks just makes the finishing a little bit easier we try to keep in mind you know the finishing process as well when we're going to pour these floors we finishing is a big part of the the finished product so we I mean we just don't randomly pour the floors. We do have a plan of attack when we do these things. There, that truck's empty. So we're going to scrape his chutes down, get him out of there. Well, not quite. Got a little bit left to pour. What's nice is these, a lot of these concrete drivers, you know, we've known them for so long. They're, they're pretty nice guys. Like, he'll get that shoot all washed up for us instead of just leaving it there for the concrete to harden on. So you can see we're going to be shooting a wet pad. This is how we screed a lot of our concrete. We do it with pads, these wet pads. We'll make a pad in the concrete the same level as the outside edges. Check it with a laser and then we'll put a little X on it when it's when it's right perfectly to grade and then we'll strike a wet pad in the middle to do our straight edging from. 
We're going to kick screed this floor instead of using our vibra screed. If you've seen some of my other videos, you can you can see some of these smaller floors. We'll just kick screed them. It's just as fast for us. You definitely need two guys. That's a 14 foot straight edge. It's definitely faster with two guys to kick screed. And by kick screeding, I just mean, you know, we're we're not stopping and pulling. We're kind of kicking and filling in our boot tracks as we're moving backwards. If the two guys doing the raking are doing a good job, then we don't usually have to stop. You can see we get that second truck pulled in there as we're straight edging the first truck so he can get all mixed up and get ready and it just helps speed up the process. A floor like this takes us about 30 minutes to pour probably. Especially if you got a couple good drivers. Sometimes you'll tell the concrete driver you want a six inch slump and it comes out just as stiff as you can be and you just can't figure out why the guy doesn't get it close. And then some guys, you'll tell a six inch slump and it comes out perfect. I'd say most of them get it close to a six. There's just a few that just can't seem to get it right. And that really slows down the whole process because they got to add water and mix up again. And then if that's not right, they got to add water and mix up again. So having a good concrete driver makes a big deal. You can see Luke there, he's bull floating. The bull float pushes down the rocks, brings up the cream. It just helps the finishing process go that much easier. Darren's there magging the edge. We snapped a chalk line on that edge at the height we need the floor at, and he's magging the edge to that chalk line. And on the front, we have a 2x6 form there that's set right to grade that we're going to go by. We call this a walkout foundation, so and by that we mean you can walk right out the basement, right to ground level. In Maine, most of the houses are built with foundations like this because of the frost. We have, uh, in the winter, the frost will go down into the ground four feet. So these concrete walls go down in there a little bit deeper than that, four and a half, sometimes five feet. Yeah, we're making another wet pad, magging the edges. We like to leave a little hole, what we call a hole. We don't fill in the complete floor with a second truck. Just in case we're high, we need a place to pull that high so we don't have to pull it outside the form and make a mess. Again, guys, I come out with two to three videos a week like this about all kinds of different things to do with concrete. We do stamp concrete, we do concrete staining, we do a lot of concrete repair. We even do a lot of epoxy floors. Um, so if you like these kinds of videos, go, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. If you got a question, leave a question down in the comments. If you pour concrete floors, you know, let me know down there and say, yeah, we pour floors too. If you have a different method, you know, let me know what your method is. Do you always use vibra screeds? Do you kick screed like this? If you're new to this, if you're just learning, then tell me if you're new or not so I can gear some videos towards new people to help you learn faster. Here, we're getting towards the end. We're going to pour the rest of that out. We'll have a guy going to grab the bull float there. Luke will grab the bull float again. These are the floors we do the most of, these residential house floors. We do some commercial work too. I did only commercial work when I first started. Hospitals, schools, parking garages, you know, big stuff, a thousand yard pours. Um, I did that for about five years and then I decided, you know what, that's not really what I want to do. So I got into residentials and just for me, I like doing the residential stuff a lot better than the big commercial stuff. We'll do small commercial stuff like 
you know, a bank or a, a fast food place, storage buildings, stuff like that, but none of that big stuff anymore. They were almost down to the end. As soon as he gets done bull floating there, we're going to turn that and bring that last bay right out. And then that'll be it for this. I'll have some other concrete floor videos linked at the end of this if you want to check out some of the other pours. Kick screen is definitely, you know, a good way to start. It's pretty easy to do. You could even really do this with a small, one guy could do this with a smaller straight edge. You just have to make more wet pads in the floor. It might take you a little bit longer, but you could still get it done that way. The four of us here, we all know how to kick screed, so it just anybody can grab the rod and just go. It makes it pretty easy. These guys have all been working for me for years too, so I mean we all know what to do. Everybody can do everything. There's not one person is just a laborer and one's a finisher. And, we just all do what needs to be done. It makes it real easy. Even me, I'm the kind of guy, I just like to jump right in there and be busy. You know, I'm not one just to supervise. I like doing the work. That's what's fun for me. Well, that's it, guys. That's the floor. So that's a basic house floor. So normally what we'll do is we'll leave one guy here to finish, and then we'll go pour another one of these. And then, you know, we'll either leave another guy there to finish on that one and go set up some jobs for another day. That's pretty much what we do every day. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you on the next video.